What's going on YouTube? It's Castle Scope back with another video. I recently got the chance to work for Scotty Barnes in creating his summer camp that he had up in Toronto. This was a great opportunity and I want to show you guys just a layer breakdown and a poster breakdown of how I put the artwork together. I believe that you guys really like poster designs from seeing comments, discords, suggestions on videos. So breaking down more of these project files and artwork files can be something that I can do more of in the future. Well, let's not waste any time and I'm going to give you guys a run through of my thought process going through this piece and just breaking down the layers and groups. All right, so we're on the project file now, Scotty Bar and Summer Camp. The main things I want to go over with you guys in today's video is the colors I used on here, typography, the masking, and just the placement of everything because I think those are the most important parts to take away from this video. As always, you guys can become a member of Patreon to get these full project files in your hands, in your arsenal to really break it down even further, as well as getting live stream playbacks, texture and asset packs monthly, and more. So as we open this up, Scotty Barnes on the cover, I always put a nice cover page just to have it looking clean for the viewer or whoever's going to be handling it, whatever. So Scotty Barnes right here, Scotty Barnes mask. Let's just hop into this mask right now. So I will say disclaimer that the player retouching is merged already, but I do have player retouch videos where I really go over how to play retouch and I can link those videos or they're always going to be in the tutorial playlist. What do, what do you notice from this layer to this layer, right? Just getting rid of the logos. And you're going to have to do this a lot when you're doing professional work, because if the guy's in the NBA, but he's getting represented by another brand, a lot of times they're not really cool with having all the logos or whatever that case is. So how do you get rid of logos easily? This is what I do. So say that we have Scotty Barnes here. If I make a duplicate layer with control J, then I'm going to rasterize this layer and bring him up. All you're going to have to do is use your polygonal lasso tool initially because you might have some cleanup that you have to do but polygonal lasso tool where is that it is right here shortcut is l but if you need to go to the polygonal lasso tool you can just click and hold and then slide to the polygonal lasso tool if it's not the first option on here because every tool has some subcategories to it so polygonal lasso tool is a subcategory to the lasso tool anyways you're gonna click and drag through right and make a nice selection of everything that you need to get rid of, whether it's the P there, whether it's the Nike sign here, if you had to get rid of that, right? And then what you do after that, make sure that you're on combined shapes when you're making your selections as well, up here at the top left. Hit Shift F5, Content Aware, you're gonna Content Aware Fill and hit OK, right? So you hit OK and you're like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, you lied, this doesn't work. Hit Command D because just deselect to, to deselect and then grab your clone stamp tool shortcut is s you're going to hold down alter option on the mac to take a sample of an area that's around so i already selected my area with hitting the alt key or option and clicking the area just right around the nike sign but then you just brush it in right brush it in like a normal soft brush if your brush isn't soft make sure that you have your hardness down and then just control the brush in this way and brush out those logos that are pesky Brush control tutorial also on playlist. If you guys have problems with your brush control, really just check my tutorials playlist or just search brush calso scoped. Okay. Have a new short on it too, how to optimize your brush quickly, but you're going to have to just do this everywhere that you see logos that probably should not be there. All right, let's go over color in this poster and the colors that I used in this poster, as you guys can see, were white, red, and black. Now, Mainly I used white and I used that and I'm basing everything off of his jersey actually. So I based my colors off of Scotty Barnes jersey in this photo. So white was the main color. So I made that the biggest block of color, right? And when you're doing this, it's not going to just come right off the bat. You have to play around with your colors. You have to experiment what colors are going to work because it's always going to be different. So white was my main color and I made sure to make that stand out. The red accents, see how I just have red accents correlating to his jersey with that red background on this photo, the red background behind the top photo as well. And then I even showcase my colors, red, black, and then white fill. Red, black, white. So you're just gonna see that everywhere and that brings a piece together. If you can choose three colors 
the one that stands out one that's kind of plain and then one that's just extremely basic right in this case his jersey was already white so i have two extremely basic colors but just choose one color that stands out in this case it's the red that really pops and makes everything pop off so typography wise i used just two fonts i want to say two fonts let me let me not say yep all i did here was use two fonts i used the font called apotech and then i used the font called tuesday night and so Apple Tech and Tuesday Night, they merge together well because if you see right here on the Scotty Barnes, this is a script font. So, and he is the main highlight of the event. So I wanted him to call attention to a viewer. So that's why I use the script font right here of Scotty Barnes because you see all of this blockier font. It kind of is just super nice and it looks like 2K, but you see all that blocky font and then you see the script font and this really separates the branding and this he is the branding scotty barnes this is his camp he's an nba superstar let's put his his name in a different font and make it very distinct from everything else so i even went ahead and used an underline that i have in my hand drawn which is part of patreon if you're a patreon you guys got this hand drawn underline effect that i have right here okay so typography wise just kept it real clean and I wanted to highlight that name. And then so for, for summer camp, you guys see the kerning is pretty much the same. It's just nice and it's just bold. Summer camp, boom, bold, in your face. Sign your kids up, get your kids to come to the summer camp. And then University of Toronto, I wanted that to be clean, separated, just look really nice. So how do you do separation of font in Adobe? So if you just highlight all your text after you write it out and then you hit Control or Command T, See, this is called kerning, right? So to bring out a font, it's called kerning to separate the letters. This is called the kerning right here, the VA, and you can separate your letters like so. I separated my letters right here on the kerning as well. And to highlight as well, play around with one family. See if you can get it done with one or two families only, and then one type of font to separate it, just like the name. But see how this is some, this is Apple Tag Black. This is also Apple Tag Black. And then the smaller information that is still important, but isn't the main part of the header, I used Apple Tag Light. So a lighter version of the font, just to vary it up and not make everything just in your face, in your face, in your face, right? You don't want that. You don't want someone just staring at that in your face. I wanna highlight this right here, Scotty Barnes, and this will be the last typography thing. A typography tip, if you're writing out a name, sometimes it looks cool if you use a, if you're writing out a name, the first name being one type of boldness of the family and the second being a different boldness. So the first name I used medium Apple Tech and the second one I used black. And see how it just gives it that nice bold separation effect instead of just being a boring Scotty Barnes in one line. Displacement, displacement, displacement. I was heavy on the displacement maps here in this piece, and I wanted to show you guys how to use a displacement map. So there's plenty of displacement maps. Anything can be a displacement map. Any, anything, yes, any, any project file, any picture, any image can be a displacement map. But what makes a displacement map work so well and how? All right, so if we look at this rectangle, how do you get from this normal rectangle to this displacement map? And it's pretty simple. So if you don't know what a displacement map is, so we just open this and I go to my displacements. I'm just gonna go to Castle Scope 3, my signature displacement, which is literally just a displacement I got from a different YouTube video. But anyway, it's like a carpet. So this is a carpet texture and you guys just see how it has a little bit of you know sharpness on it. And you don't really have to learn, worry about making a displacement map. You can find them anywhere on the internet. But just know that once you save a displacement map, this is how you apply it. So if I were not to have this filter on, it is a filter. So just go to filter, distort, displace, and you're going to have to play with your numbers and variation because every image can be different. Like I said, a displacement map can be any type of image. So it could be a carpet. It could be metal. It could be brick. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. So you're gonna have to play with the horizontal and vertical scale at the beginning. Try to keep your horizontal and vertical scale even just so that you can get an even estimate of where you should go next. I'm hitting okay. 
and I'm going to hit Castle Scope 3 and I'm just going to displace this real quick and see how quickly you can make something look more interesting and not as flat just from a displacement map. This just varies up the the vibe of a poster, the vibe of a piece of artwork. So just try and play around with displacement maps. I do have a tutorial um, so I can actually unlist that or it's or it's exclusive. We'll, we'll see. But anyways, just play around with displacement maps. Don't go too crazy. So you see how some of these shapes are just normal and they're not displaced at all. You don't need to have everything displaced. That's something that you're going to want to do in the beginning. I know, but just chill. You don't need to do that. All right. So I want to show you guys the Toronto background and how did I do this Toronto background cityscape subtle background. So I started off with a dark image and then I added a Gothic texture. This Gothic texture is just really nice. I really like it. Um, so this Gothic texture right here, inverted the texture right so i inverted it so they would be like darker and then i added a curves layer to it and you guys see how i just brought it down from being bright just added a curves layer then from there i found a photo of toronto the city of toronto i used a blending option so if you don't know what blending options is this just blends an image into another image or another or whatever is below it so if you right click and you hit blending options See how I had it separated, separated on underlying layer. How how can you how can you make it smooth though? Because this is a little bit rigid, right? If you're just dragging this shade and you want to blend in with shadows, how can you make this smooth? So you hold down Alt or Option if you're on the Mac, and then you just click on this triangle here and you just slide like this, slide like so, so that you get a smooth blend in there. After that. I added on a darker gradient. So gradient maps just go from dark to light. So as long as you understand that gradient maps go from darkest color to brightest color, you can just pick a nice midpoint and get a nice variant going from dark to light. And these were also clipped all to the rectangle just to make sure that none of them went outside of the rectangle because if they were not clipped, you would have a mess like this. To create a clipping mask, you just right click. I guess this doesn't want to clip, let's see. Right click and create a clipping mask is right here. See how the creating clip mask is right there. And that's how you create a clipping mask or you can go underneath the layer holding down alter option. So you see this diagram right here that we're zoomed up on and click that to make clipping mask. So those are the most important parts that I want you guys to take away and just things to go through your mind when creating your next poster design or professional work. What colors are coalescing with the actual concept, theme, brand, poster, player, whatever the case may be. When you're finding the photos that you want to use in addition to possibly your player mask, there's no exact method that I can say that you're going to follow, but just use photos that are relative to the event and just that pop. Like you want something that is going to make someone stop and want to look or feel an emotional connection to a piece. So I'm very thankful that I was able to create this piece and hope you guys hope to give you guys some insight. I know it's not like the longest video where I'm talking about every single part of the project, but that's okay. And that's why I have the Patreon. So you guys can go on my project files and really break it down even further. With that being said, if there were any questions in particular that you had on this piece or that you have when you want to design your next piece or theme or branding, let me know in the comment section below. I'm open to answering your guys' questions for real. With that being said, it's been Castle Scope, the artist of athletes. I'm going to catch you guys in the next video soon. Take care. Peace.